Welcome to week 12. We're at the end of day one. We've arrived in our usual place of Bowmanville. We're at the fifth wheel truck stop. Beautiful, beautiful day out, as you can see. Nice and, well, it's not as clear as it was, but it's been sunny pretty much all day. Okay, so this week also we're going to do uh, part two of our pre-trip uh, Trucker 101. Uh, just in case anyone's wondering. Um, also, I just wanted to quickly mention, a lot of guys are asking about like trucking schools and stuff like that. Um, I can't give you a whole lot of information on trucking schools because, I mean, it's been over 20 years. Uh, it's been over 25 years. Let's see, when did five years? I was 21 years old when I got it, so I'm going to be uh, 47 this year. So it's basically tw on the 25th year here. So anyways, it's been a long time, so I really can't give you much information on that. But um, my advice is, you know, uh, do your research. See what's the best fit for you. Uh, talk around. Uh, you know, see who's got a decent reputation. Um, you know, Better Business Bureau, things like that. Uh, someone, if it's a shitty uh, trucking school, people always write reviews. And if you just Google it, uh, you'll find those reviews quite easily. Uh, you know, you're going to pass up a chance at going to a really, really good trucking school who's going to give you proper training and, you know, take the time with you. But you can't afford it because they're a little bit pricier and then you're going to go to a second-rate trucking school and that's not such a good thing either you know check to see if they've got financing look at look at some financing options then look at what you're going to get you got to talk to them say okay you know how many hours driving i'm going to get how many classroom hours uh you know what kind of equipment am i going to learn if they're going to teach you how to drive tractor trailer and i've seen this i go by it on the highway in the interstate and you see these trucking schools on the side of the highway and what they have is this little single axle day cab and a 35 foot or 40 foot pup trailer now really yeah don't learn tractor trailer with that shit okay uh you want them to teach you on a class 8 truck a full truck you know with full sleeper everything tandem axle uh 53 foot trailer preferably because that's what we haul out here yeah i'm on a 48 foot flatbed but you know what in general that's what you need to learn on because you know you learn on that little crap and you're going to get out there and all of a sudden the company you're going to go to work for is going to hand you this uh, tandem axle uh, 70 inch uh, high rise bunk sleeper uh, I don't know 300 inch wheelbase now nah, that might be a little long 260 280 inch wheelbase whatever uh, and a 53 foot trailer and you know what you're going to get into a truck stop parking lot and you're going to tear off hoods mirrors everything why because all of a sudden your dimensions your lengths everything changes so anyway that's one of the major things you gotta look at you know what kind of equipment are they going to teach you on so i'm just you know trying to pass on some information uh in the u.s it's a different magazine i think it goes by the same name but it's just uh or close to the same name but this is for canada good place for lots of information is truck news okay it comes out every month it's free pick it up at pretty much any truck stop um you've got everything from what's going on in uh for for law it even talks about u.s law uh stuff that's going on there you know um changes uh it, it highlights on you know new equipment that's coming out uh preventive maintenance uh everything and anything trucking is really in this magazine Plus, there's a section in here towards the back for those of you looking for jobs. Uh, and you can go online for this. You don't have to get the magazine. Uh, but, uh, of course, this is the one time I'm going to not find it. You know, they've got many, many pages here towards the back of trucking jobs. Okay? So, anyone who says, oh, there's no jobs out there, you're full of it. Okay? There's all kinds of jobs out there, may not be necessarily where you live, okay? Any of the major cities, you're not going to have a problem finding a job. Um, uh, I worked for Celadon Trucking from 2005 to or the end of 2005 to the end of 2007. It was only two years. And then I went to Iraq. However, Celadon, really good company, Canada and U.S. It is a U.S.-based company. 
Um, you gotta have minimum one year driving experience, okay? Uh, they don't do training or anything like that. But um, they got terminals all over the place. And I lived in Ottawa. Their terminal here in Ontario was in Kitchener. So it was a six hour drive for me. But you know what? Sometimes you just have to do that. It was a good job, good pay, uh, decent miles. Um, you know, what some of you are gonna say, well, why aren't you back there? Well, because these guys hired me, I'm 40 minutes from home. So I mean, you know, the money that, the, that I'm making less per mile driving here is basically what I would spend in fuel driving back and forth every two weekends. And that's the other thing too, is this company, I'm home every weekend, whereas with Celadon, it'd be every second weekend. So that's that. I don't want to ramble on too much. I've already gone on like over five minutes here about this. So um, hopefully that answers the question about trucking schools because a couple have asked and whatnot. So, at any rate, so that's my tip, uh, my advice. You know, guys, uh, do your research. Research, research, research. You know, uh, and that's about it. So anyways, I'm here in Bowmanville. Time to make uh, dinner. Uh, not sure what it's going to be. Uh, but hey, jump in the back. I'll show you real quick and then uh, that's it for today. All right, so we're here in the back. Got the chair flipped around. And this week, uh, I've got so many choices this week for food. Uh, it's unbelievable. Uh, not all leftovers, but um, I got some yummy uh, homemade potato salad that I brought home or brought with me. I've also got uh, homemade beef stew. Only thing is I forgot to bring bread. Not a big deal because probably don't need the bread anyways. Uh, but normally I like to mix it in with some rice. So, But we're just having the beef stew uh, on its own. And then we got a whole bunch of other stuff that uh, I'll show you guys later in the week. Uh, really good, uh, you know, food choice for uh, you guys that are buying at the grocery store. You know, perfect portion size. But at any rate, this is homemade beef stew. Doesn't look like much, but trust me, it is absolutely yummy. So, anyways, that's what my dinner is for tonight. And uh, we're gonna watch a bit of TV, and then we're gonna go to bed. Get an early start, get through Toronto in the morning, and uh, you know, get towards Chicago there to our normal stop in uh, Burns Harbor. So, anyway, we'll talk to you later. All right, it's uh, time to head her out. I'm gonna head for uh, our delivery, and uh, and uh, and uh, yeah, that's it. So we're heading for the delivery. So. Okay, so I'm here at the customer. Uh, difference between this customer and our other customer that we normally go to is the other customer I can uh, unstrap, untarp, and all that other stuff. So when they first open, I can, uh, you know, get in, get unloaded, get out. This customer, they want to actually see the tarps on the stuff. So the only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go out right now and take off all the bungees and just leave a couple on to hold it in place so that... Uh, when I do pull up, uh, they can see the tarps are still on. It's kind of a drag because I like to get all my stuff ready, you know, get it all done so that I can just go in and get unloaded. But that's one thing about knowing your customers is uh, knowing what they prefer. So I don't come here too often. Last time I was here was, uh, oh, Christ, a year and a half ago. So, but I found the place. I didn't get lost. So memory's still working. Henry, I'm gonna go uh, take my bungees off at least, get something done. All right, a little bit noisy here, but we're just out checking our crappy tarp job. Making sure everything's still good. Checking the straps. It's pretty windy out. Uh, we got one there that we could probably tighten up in the morning there. Not bad. So we're running the uh, wide base tires on this trailer. It's the only one that we have without the curtain side that's like that, so that I know of. Eh, we did something a little different. I didn't feel like folding them up underneath. Made a little bit of excess uh, tart, 
So instead of crunching it up underneath, we just stretched her out, bungeed it off in a couple of spots, as you can see. Put one strap over to keep her down from ballooning. And that's that. Well, we're good. It's a beautiful day out, or was. Nice and warm. So, we're just out checking stuff. Oh, another thing too. Uh, Trucker 101-ish type thing. Uh, guys, when you're checking your tires in the morning, don't just thump them with a hammer or something. And actually put your foot in there and give them a little kick. Uh, I ended up with a flat tire today that ended up well, almost flat. That one there was the uh, valve stem here that was loose. So we got that fixed. So guys, I don't know if it was uh, low on air before I got to it, or before I got to my uh, delivery, or after, got a bit of air in it, got to the truck stop, got them to check it. So that's that. So any rate, that's it for now. We're in Grand Ledge, Michigan, and we're about to have dinner. Hey, okay, so I've had a couple people ask about the gauges and switches in my truck. So let's just go over them real quick here. And we're talking about like what's all on the dash here. Now I've lowered the steering wheel as low as I can get here to help out. So we'll start on the left side here. And the first one here is the brake application gauge. So you can see when I press on the brake, it tells me how much air is going in there many pounds per square inch or PSI that's going into the brake chamber. Uh, down below it we have oil temperature. Up here we have our water temperature. Uh, currently it shows at 190. It's because the engine stopped right now. So when I was coming in it warmed up a little bit. Once we get going it'll normally run around the 180. Then we have our oil PSI. i try to get that down here for you. Uh, it normally runs at when we're running. Like I said, the engine's off right now, so don't go by what it's showing here. It normally runs just around the 40 mark. And down below it, we have our uh, voltmeter, or battery volts. And it's right at where it's supposed to be. We got some dirt on our lens, eh? I didn't mean to blow in your face, but... Yeah, we still got some dirt there, I think. <gasps> yeah, I know. Hey, at least I didn't do the uh, like your mom used to do when you were a kid, you remember? And you had that dirt spot on your face. Okay, carrying on. We have our tack, uh, RPM. And we have the speedometer, obviously, and ours, uh, the Canadian trucks, are in miles per uh, hour on the inside ring, kilometers per hour on the outside ring. Then on this side, we have our, uh, our tank number uh, one for our air, okay? Uh, and it's at right where it's supposed to be right now, which is uh, 110. Actually, it should be a little higher. That's because we came in. And this is tank number two. For our PSI levels, down below it, uh, sorry guys, we have the fuel gauge, uh, beside it is our uh, transmission temperature, and then our rear drive axle temperature, and our front drive axle temperature. And on this side, we have our, uh, for our drive axles or our weight uh, the air pressure uh, on our airbags there for the when we're loaded. I can go almost up to the 40 mark right now. It's just around the 35, so I'm still good for my drive axles. And above here is our uh, turbo boost uh, pressure. And of course, this is for our uh, air filter. Uh, it lets us know when it's getting dirty and clogged and uh, when it needs to be changed. All right, so for the switches, we have our... Uh, dimmer switch, you know, you flash and the taillights flash on and off. 
um, or you can turn your marker lights on just on their own. Headlight switch, marker light, uh, panel dimmer switch so it uh, lightens and darkens the panel, uh, windshield washer, uh, fluid down here and the wipers here. Now this little one here, and I'll just turn on my key here to show you and make some noise here. This is uh, what tells me... Zuri, you, good morning, dear Slayer. Sorry. This tells me what gear I'm in. Right now, because the truck's not started, it's just showing the CH. Anyways, this spare switch is actually for my uh, fan in the back when I turn it on, and I've got it on. And you're probably saying, what fan is that, Jerry? Um, this one right here. Alright. Okay, so carrying on. Uh, we'll get back here to the dash. Sorry about that. Okay, so and we have our cruise uh, set. Uh, and that's for, uh, you know, setting the speed and whatnot. Uh, throttle. I like the fast idle. And, of course, the cruise on and off. Uh, this is for the fog lights. Power mirror on the driver's side and power mirror on the passenger side. Now the fan override, which means I can turn on the uh, engine fan. If it's running a little hot, uh, like climbing a mountain and whatnot, and I don't want that fan to uh, shut off, so I just flick it on and the fan will stay on all the time. Now air shield. Uh, this is my uh, side work lights. Okay. On the side of the truck. I uh, don't know, you can really see them there. You can see the one sitting up there. So it turns those ones on. All right. Then we have uh, for my engine brakes, uh, I have the three, three uh, selectors. You got one, two, and three. I don't know why they just didn't do one, two, and three in order, but at any rate, on off. It's for diagnostics, heated mirror, and fridge control, which doesn't work in this truck because the fridge is supposed to be behind my seat so it's for the uh, AC plug down there which I don't have but my fridge is on this side so I don't need it and of course uh, my Bluetooth hanging here your uh, brakes your air valves and then you got your power divider your fifth wheel slide and down here is uh, for the airbags uh, to raise or lower and then of course your AC and uh, you know heater vents uh, fan and of course my shifter so those are my gauges and switches okay we are empty meaning no more freight on board meaning uh, we're heading out of here we are in Laval and we are heading uh, back to the yard and we're gonna go the back way so at any rate, uh, yeah, that's that. So, we'll see you in a bit. Okay, so, so ends another week. I had done a little bit more video uh, around the Montreal area. Problem is, is my memory card filled up and I had no more space. So I had to delete a little bit of it so that I could do my end of week thing. Nothing major, so don't worry about it. I'll redo that stuff like next week. So anyways, end of uh, this week and uh, we'll see you next week. Uh, have a good weekend, guys.